from the studios of Adventist World Radio in Pune. And a very warm welcome to our international English service. In our program today, we bring you inspiring music, an interesting nature study. With more music coming in, we shall end our program with a message from God's Word. This is your host Sharath, and I am Maureen, and you are listening to Adventist World Radio, the Voice of Hope. Let's begin our program with a song. Oh, come 
You are listening to Adventist World Radio, the voice of hope from Pune, India. And now, here's a nature study. Dear listener, today we are going to talk about making melody. Do you see why bees hum? It's because they can't remember the words. Ironically, that old joke reminds me of a serious story I read about a man awaiting heart bypass surgery. He was aware that people died during surgery. As he thought about all that could go wrong, he felt very much alone. Then a nurse walked into his room to take him to surgery. As the young man began to push his gurney along the corridor, the patient heard him humming an old hymn, Be Thou My Vision. It prompted his memories of lush green fields and the ancient stone ruins of Ireland, the land of his birth. The hymn flooded his soul like a fresh breath of home. When the nurse finished with that song, he hummed Horatio Spafford's hymn, It is well with my soul. When they stopped outside the surgical suite, the man thanked him for the hymns. God has used you this day, he said, to remove my fears and restore my soul. How so? The nurse asked in surprise, Your hums brought God to me, the man replied. The Lord has done great things for us. Psalms 126.3 He has filled our heart with song. He may even use our hums to restore someone's soul. Praise flows freely from the choir of the redeemed. Thank you for the nature study. We are sure our listeners enjoyed it. To learn more on nature, keep listening to Adventist World Radio. We will be studying different objects of nature because there is a simplicity and purity in these lessons direct from nature that makes them of the highest value. The children and youth, all classes of students, need the lessons to be derived from this source. In itself, the beauty of nature leads the soul away from sin and worldly attractions and toward purity, peace and God. Dear friend, death, struggle, pain and violence were not part of God's original creation. Let's discover what was the world like when God created it. To know more on God's word, you could also write to us. Here's our mailing address. Adventist World Radio, Post Box No. 17 Pune 411001 Maharashtra, India. You could also email us on Adventist Media Center at gmail.com. You may also follow our programs on our website awr.org slash English program. Before you hear God's word, here's another song. Billy, 
I see you standing near me shining with compassion in your eyes oh in your eyes oh day star shine down on me let your love shine through me in the night Time to hear God's word. Dear listener, today we are going to study about Trinity. 
why is it so important that we need to know what is trinity dear listener the trinity is not just an inconsequential and isolated philosophical concept what we believe about personality and nature of the father son and the holy spirit has a great impact on many other doctrines and beliefs it is not something we can set aside lightly without affecting several crucial aspects of our christian experience such as number 1 dear listener salvation if in the cross mercy and truth may have met then christ had to be fully divine part of the triune god if not then god would have been dependent on some inferior created creature to demonstrate his love and satisfy his justice god would have been taking out his wrath on an innocent third party raising the question of the entire justice of an uh, act rather in god man christ god has met the needs for justice through his own willingly given divine self sacrifice for god was in christ reconciling the world to himself second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 and of course only a being who naturally possesses Uh, immortality can offer everlasting life to those who take advantage of saving power of his atoning death john chapter 11 verse 25 dear listener thank god our salvation does not depend on any inferior created being but on the eternal triune god himself number 2 dear listener knowledge of god much of what we know about god comes from what christ came to reveal through his teachings an example john chapter 1 verse 18 however only one who is god in the fullest sense of the word can effectively show us what god is like otherwise christ's revelation of the father would have been flawed and incomplete only a divine insider would really show humanity the truth about god and only the divine holy spirit who has been eternally bound up with the heart of self sacrificing love in the father and the son can fully communicate such love to lost human beings furthermore the fact that the holy spirit is a fully divine person and not a mere uh, force or power is very significant we cannot relate to a force as we do to a person an impersonal power can be easily manipulated but not a person only a real divine person can comfort us teachers and guide us dear listener this is found in john chapter 14 verse 16 chapter 16 verse 13 thirdly dear listener reconciliation humanity's reconciliation with god would only be accomplished by someone who was equal with god possessing the divine attributes that would allow him to intercede on man's behalf before the infinite god and also represent god to a fallen world he must also share our own human nature a connection with the human family whom he was to represent in order to be a mediator between god and humanity hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 to 16 Furthermore only the omnipresent spirit who fully knows the heart of our great high priestly intercessor can adequately comfort us and impart the blessings of Christ's constant intercession on our behalf fourthly dear listener sanctification sin has distorted god's creation in such a way that the only one who can fix it is none other than the original divine creator jesus christ the creator becomes the great physician of the human soul he alone has the power to recreate god's image in any sinner who willingly and humbly comes to him for restoration 
However, Christ is no longer physically present to do this work. The only being capable of working together with Christ is in bringing about this transformation is the divine Holy Spirit who has also worked with the Son in creation. Fifthly, dear listener, unity. Jesus prayed for his disciples of all times, asking that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. John chapter 17, verse 21. If the Son and the Father were not completely equal in power, nature and attributes, what kind of unity would Christ be asking for? It would be an unequal and subordinate unity, but since He and the Father and the Spirit are mutually interdependent in uh, their divine love, existence and work, the same oneness is asked for the disciples that they may be one in equal interdependence and loving service. Sixthly, dear listener, marriage and equality. In the beginning, God created man in his own image as male and female. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. The ideal expressed in creation was for man and woman to form a whole in which they were to be mutually complementary and interdependent following the pattern of relationships in the Godhead, John chapter 17, verse 24. Had there been hierarchical uh, differences in the nature and attributes of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit being created in His own image wouldn't have made any sense when applied to the equality of men and women. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Dear listener, there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A unity of three co-eternal persons. God is immortal, all-powerful, all-knowing, above all, and ever-present. He is infinite and beyond human comprehension, yet known through His self-revelation. He is forever worthy of worship, adoration, and service by the whole creation. Matthew chapter 28 Verse 19. Lastly, dear listener, to some, the Godhead is the ultimate paradox. Somehow they are separate yet inseparable. Somehow they are three and yet they are one. But once you have looked at the alternatives, the doctrine of Trinity is unavoidable. We may not be able to completely solve the mystery of Trinity in this life and maybe not even in the next one, but one thing's for sure, there is no other God beside Him. He comes to us in His magnificent threeness of being, and this three-in-one God is all we need. May God bless you, dear listener, as you try to understand God as Trinity. May God bless you. Let's pray. Almighty God, who is the creator and sustainer of this universe, O Lord, we come to you as we are, weak and feeble. Lord, we may, un we may not understand the Trinity, but we want to ask the Holy Spirit to touch us and make us understand what the Trinity is. We thank thee for Christ who came down and died in our place so that we can have life eternal. We thank Thee for the Holy Spirit to guide us, dear Lord, to know You through our only resource of help and salvation. Strengthen our faith to accept You as our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Here's another song.
the holy scriptures says your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path psalms 119 verse 105 indeed my dear listener what a treasure we have in god's word the holy bible is relevant to today's issues and gives solid guidance for daily living with this we have almost come to the end of our program to learn more on god's word we would love to receive your letters on adventist world radio post box number 17 pune 411001 maharashtra india you could also email us on adventist media center at gmail.com we invite you to follow our programs also on our website that's awr.org/english program this is your host sharad and i'm maureen signing off from adventist world radio do join us again along with your family and friends until we meet again via radio we wish you goodbye and god bless you